Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. My name is Keith and I'm your host. Before we get started, class, how about the Pledge of Allegiance? strive to help our customers get through these pressing times. Your job might be run-of-the-mill. Your job might need universal thinking. Here we have a new drill. It's called Get Her Done. New work is great, but here we can keep up the spark even on the long-term jobs. We know you're going to be satisfied on how your job turns out here because we feel pretty highly on our workmanship expectations. Welcome to Turnwright Machine Works, family owned and operated job shop. My name is Keith Fenner. I'm an artist, a jobber, 36 years in the trade. We often get asked what it is that we do in here, and my reply is we take our customers' projects and we get them done. Here's a view of what you might find in our shop at any one given day. This is a piece of 8620. We have a pair of them. They're going to be a, uh, the main pivot pin. Newfoundland loader and we've got it down to size and we've radius the corner here we're ready to cut off this end we got the zerk hole to put in and uh, then we got a flat plate that gets welded onto it uh, that retains the pin and holds it in a location later on we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these in the oven and we're gonna heat treat them and uh, that should be good to go this cutlass bearing this one we had to bore out and uh, you can see how close we got on the board getting that one out. Some of them we can just press straight out, but if they have a blind shoulder that they, they press into, it, you, you have to uh, get in there and cut them out. A couple years ago, I came up with a, uh, a draw nut idea on cutlass bearing. And this is a glass tube here, stern tube that's going to be put in. This is new construction. And I thread the OD of the bearing and I make these draw nuts. Now I hang on to the draw nuts. I have the tools, to, the wrench that fits on here. I have the drivers that put it in, the sleeves that help pull it out. Basically this was come up so that on the glass tube, a fragile system, you could pull your two dimpled set screws out and you can crank the nut and draw the bearing out. And uh, it is now such a great tool because the guy can change out his bearing with the shaft left in place and this one just came in this morning so I ordered up the bearing we're going to be getting this one out and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing most of the time most applications you've got the room here for this extended bearing out past your uh, your, your stern uh, support also we've taken some regular stuffing boxes and uh, they're uh, modifying old packing glands making them into dripless. And what we do is we cut off the flange that was out here and we turn this down to a, a bellows diameter give them a couple uh, anti-slip grooves in here, some barbs and then we go ahead and we machine for the bearing. Now we left it shallow here, left the shoulder and this stern tube and bearing contact is not interrupted. Okay, we've uh, modified uh, this bearing. We cut some length off of here. We matched the whole pattern to his old log. And this reminds me, we had to remove, hand draw a little flare off of here. Now, if this is your only tool and you think it's universal, we can help you out as well. But I want you to know that they do make all kinds 
of different hammers and for different purposes. Now, when it comes to man-made damage, we'll still accept the job. On, on, on hammer issues, we categorize it as ding, flare, and mushroom. And uh, we, we compound that by the aggravation during the refurbishing process. And we can come up with a good price for you. So bring it on in. Oh, one more thing. Uh, uh, we, won't, we haven't come up with uh, set prices or fixed rate pricing for you broke a tap off in your hole or uh, knurled by pipe wrench. Uh, these, these things, uh, you really got to look at them to see how much it is. Um, remember, it's, it, it's not the cost of repair. It's the cost of the damage you caused. Thank you. This shaft just came in this morning and uh, we checked it out for run out. I'll be doing a die check on the keyways, making sure there's no breaks. Uh, one thing that was interesting on this is uh, uh, the fit on the propeller. And uh, I'll take a quick show at, at that. This is someone I'm doing a, a shaft check for. We're going to check it for cracks and everything else. But the first thing I'm checking for is uh, contacts, wear, and, uh, and obvious things that show up the average person won't look at. Now you can see right here the major diameter of the taper. It's making good contact all there. And you see this line right here? Okay, that's, that's the end of the contact from here to there. The propeller is not making contact anywhere in here. This is why it's important to do lap fits and bring those two diameters full contact. You need to extend this down. You need at least 70-80% of contact on, on your taper. It should be greater up here, but it should have some down here. I had to run and grab the other half of it. What we have here is a shell out of a Babbitt bearing and it's for a, a 15 foot, 2 and a quarter inch shaft we have and it's going to carry some of the load. The Babbitt was worn and uh, this thing was buried in grease and uh, we're going to be re-pouring the Babbitt in here. So that thing's cleaned up right now. We've got a dummy piece of shaft we're going to lay in here. We're going to make two shaft collars to go on here. We're going to smoke the shaft and we're going to pour the lower half. Make a shim pack, bolt it together and pour the top half and replace this Babbitt inside this bearing. Yes, we do make new shafting, but it's not our main priority. We're more focused on shaft repair. This is a, a die for glass plate making, and it, it, we did this job a couple weeks ago, and uh, it come back into the shop uh, so we can do some modifications so that it works for the customer. This is a receiver that holds the die itself. This locks up into the machine and then comes down and does the pressing. Well, there wasn't enough clearance in here, so we modified to move this upper handle back. Also, when this slides in on the table, we didn't realize how close we were here, and it was actually holding a little gap down here. Now we've taken care of the problems. We're taking this back down, and uh, we're gonna, we got other projects to go. He wants to work on retainers for this ring and so on. So he's totally happy with our work, and this is customer support. this piston and ram come in today and uh, just I mean nothing out of the ordinary but they wanted to limit the stroke on this for full extension so I machined the collar they wanted 248 thousandths uh, we got it like 249 it was, it, it's not that accurate of a thing but the the cylinder was going past its full travel and it was hindering the operation of the machine so they wanted to lessen it I went ahead and machined a uh, o-ring groove on the inside of the ring so that when it was slipped on 
it's got tension. And when the piston is assembled, and the ring sits there, doesn't move around, fluid travels over, finest kind, ready to go. You know I hate production. <laughs> this is self-induced here. Uh, you build something and you, you trap yourself in, you can't get out. Uh, popular stick, the right stick. You'll see that later on. I, uh, I think that does it for today and uh, it's been fun, it's been real. I got uh, uh, some other ideas on videos there. Uh, shafting is my main video I'll be concentrating on. You will be surprised at the end. Um, I also have a video on the um, heat treating and also on the Babbitt pouring. And uh, like I said, hey, it's been fun. Get her done. <laughs>